Hi everyone, welcome back. And in this week's video, I'm going to be talking about why you may be flipping your wrist through impact and a few things you can do to help you train yourself out of it. This is a very common issue that I see all of the time and is one issue that can affect low point, club face control, and distance. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf related content. So to start off, I just want to explain what the difference might be between a flip and a release. So a release is when you typically see a little bit more pronation in the trail arm and supination in the lead arm. And the wrist will stay fairly neutral with maybe a little bit more added flex in the lead wrist and extension in the trail wrist through the hitting area. Now a flip is when a player adds too much extension into the, tr into the lead wrist and flexion in the trail wrist. And when a player does that, you'll typically see that their longest point is behind the golf ball. They'll typically add more loft to the club and it'll cause the swing direction to be, be more degrees left and across the golf ball. Now, I went over the concepts about release in my last video. So if you haven't checked that out already, um, I advise you to do that. But if you do think you are a player that does flip your wrists or add too much extension in the lead wrist, um, through the hitting area, that it's usually caused by a combination of a few different things. The players that tend to flip the club the most through impact will tend to have a weaker grip uh, at their setup position. Now, for those of you who may not know what a weak grip is, that just means that if you're a right-handed player, your palms are turned to the left too excessively on the handle. And in addition to having a weak grip at the setup, these players will tend to add too much extension or cupping in that lead wrist. So when they do that, by the time they get to the top of their backswing, their club face is very, very open. So this leaves the player two options in order to square up the club face. Option number one would be if you have too much extension at the top and a weak grip, you would have to add flex back into the lead wrist. So that means you'd have to purposely bow your lead wrist very, very hard in order for you to turn the club face down enough to get the club face back to square. With, this is something that a vast majority of players don't do. So option number two is when you're at the top, what you'll have to do is you'll have to swing the club steep on the way down. You'll have to swing the club more degrees from out to in. And you'll also have to add even more extension back into the lead wrist and flexion in the trail wrist. So if you find out that you use option number two to square up the face, I'm here to tell you that is probably the least effective way in order for you to square up the face. So as I'm getting closer into impact, if I perform option number two, when I swing more over the top, add more extension into the lead wrist, you can see that, yes, eventually the club face can return back to square. However, you can see that there's no forward shaft lean. The shaft is actually leaning more backwards. There's added loft to the club face. And that would force me to kind of get my longest point well behind the ball, which is gonna affect where I strike the ground. So to start training yourself out of this pattern, what I would advise you guys to do is to check your grip. So if you find out that you do have a weaker than normal grip, I would strengthen the grip. That means turn your hands more to the right of the handle if you're a right-handed player, to where it's either neutral or maybe even slightly stronger than normal. This is to ensure that your club face is a lot less likely to be closed in the backswing and at impact. So the second thing I would advise you guys to do after you check your grip or you change your grip is to have the feeling or sensation that you're twisting or turning the club face more down as you take the club back and get to the top of your backswing. This will ensure that you do not add extension or cupping into that lead wrist. And when players get to the top and they feel like they've twisted the club face down and added more flex into the lead wrist, it actually makes it the downswing easier to maintain the flex um, in the downswing as opposed to having to add flex into the wrist in the downswing. So the third thing that you must do is to control the location of the handle at the moment of impact and post impact. So the players that tend to flip the golf club, post impact the handle tends to stay very close to their belt buckle. Now the players that tend to have more forward shaft lean, post impact you'll see that the handle is much further away from them. So the goal would be to train yourself to try and get the handle of the club or butt end of the club as far away from you as possible. And the way that you're going to be doing that is to add or maintain as much flex in the lead wrist as you can or an and extension in the trail wrist as you can and try to hold it 
for as long as possible through the hitting area. So a great exercise to help you guys make this change is to exaggerate all three of those points that I mentioned. So I would want you guys to try and have a stronger than normal grip. I'd want you guys to feel as though you're adding as much flexion as you can in that lead wrist. And if you do those two things, the only way that you're going to be able to launch the golf ball relatively straight is to be able to lean the shaft really, really far forward. If you have a very strong grip and you add a lot of flex and lead wrist, that's probably going to make the club face very, very closed. So if you lean the shaft kind of straight up and down or even backwards again, you're almost guaranteed to hit the golf ball left. So when you're doing this exercise, I would also advise you guys to do almost chip shots or very, very small swings. Just because when you perform this drill with a full swing and you're going at full speed, it's very difficult or it's more difficult to kind of feel out um, certain positions or the, or the shaft leaning forward at impact. So there's a very simple station that you guys can set up the next time you practice. So here with my ball on the mat, I've just set an alignment stick on the ground um, directly in front of the golf ball, right down the target line. I've also seen people, you know, if you're on a grass range, they just stick the alignment stick straight up and down, um, kind of also right down the target line in front of the golf ball. But you're just going to use that as a reference as to where you're launching the golf ball. So again, when we have a very strong, much stronger than normal grip than usual, and you add a lot of flex into that lead wrist, so you're, you're essentially turning the face down and making the club face a lot more closed. When you go to strike it, if you don't lean the shaft forward, you're, you're going to launch the golf ball to the left, just like that. Whereas if you were to lean the shaft forward enough while, while having that strong grip and more lead wrist flex, you can see that I can still launch the golf ball to the right. So now for me to do that, I had to really get the handle forward. Okay, so if you look closely at, um, at my club face, if I don't change anything and I just lean the club handle backwards, you can see how that turns the face more closed. And then reversely, if I don't change anything, if I just lean the shaft more forward, that helps to open up the face. So that will help to kind of offset the fact that you have a very strong grip and you're twisting the face down to add more flex. So even though the club face is very closed, if you do lean the shaft forward enough, that'll help to kind of open the face enough or, or prevent it from shutting even more just so you can launch the golf ball to the right. And that's what you want to try and do. Now, after practicing over-exaggeration of these three points, you can obviously just tone everything back down. So you don't have to get such a uh, strong grip. You don't have to flex your lead wrist so excessively. Um, but the fact that you did practice these things and over-exaggerated them, when you do tone it down, it should feel much easier to perform. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you have any questions about anything that I've talked about, you can leave a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss if you want to inquire about my online lessons. I will also leave a link to my website in the description box below as well so you can see all the details. And if you're not in a rush, be sure to check out this video right here. This is a great video talking about the sequence of the downswing and the key roles of the arms, body, and wrists.